It was a lovely day at Family Farm, and the sheep were grazing quietly in the fields. Are you ready, Tommy? said Tech. Ready for what? asked Tommy. Ready to go for a walk, of course, replied Tech. Oh, hooray! cried Tommy. He loved going for walks. And where are you two off? asked the big blue tractor. For a walk over the fields, exclaimed Tech. And perhaps we'll see a fox, or a pheasant, or a wild rabbit. One thing's for sure, you won't see anything very interesting in the field, replied the big blue tractor with amusement. But the last time I saw a badger, replied Tech. A badger? Honestly? Oh! I saw an ambulance on my way to the market yesterday. But Tech and Tommy took no notice of the big blue tractor and his big old ambulance. They would much rather see a few wild animals. Tech? Tommy? Where are you? Over here! Beep beep! To the Tech. Oh, there you are. Will you come and help me collect the rubbish, please? Asked Roy. Collect rubbish? Moaned Tech. Oh, not again, whined Tommy. Come along. It won't take us long, Roy reassured them. And the three of them set off down the lane. <coughs> Goodness gracious me, what a mess, exclaimed Tech when he saw all the rubbish strewn on the side of the lane. Roy picked up the crisp packets, the empty cans, the plastic bags and put them all into Tommy the trailer. Dear me, that's very dangerous, said Roy when he saw a broken glass bottle. And to make sure that it didn't harm any of the animals, Roy put the glass straight into Tommy the trailer. And it was lucky that he was wearing gloves, or else he might cut his hands. And when they reached the cowshed, Roy took all the rubbish out of Tommy the trailer. Can we go for a walk now, Roy? asked Tech. Well, of course you can. I'll go and open the gate for you, said Roy. And after Roy had opened the gate, Tech and Tommy drove through the paddock and out into the field. And off Roy went to fix the fence and mend the holes in the stone walls. That's strange, thought Tech. Roy seems to be spending a lot of his time mending holes in the walls these days. Someone must be climbing over the walls instead of going over the stile. Oh, look, said Tech. Badgers! And the two watched as the badger hid in the grass. Tech, watch where you're going, shouted Tommy the trailer. 
but Tech went head first straight into the stone wall. Oh, ouch! cried the little red tractor with pain. Hey, look what's over there, whispered Tech. And the little red tractor and the trailer stood perfectly still while they watched the wild rabbit munching on grass in the field. And after a little while, Tech stopped in his tracks. Goodness gracious me, he exclaimed. What's the matter? asked Tommy. But Tech didn't need to explain. There before him was a huge hole. Come on, we'd better go and tell Roy, said Tech, and the two drove back along the field. Roy! Roy! shouted Tech. Dear me, what's the matter? asked Roy. There's there's a big hall over there, puffed Tech, short of breath. It's huge! Oh dear, sighed Roy. Holes, holes, holes. They were everywhere, and he had to close them up, or else all the animals would get mixed up. But Roy was very grateful that they had come back to tell him. I'll be there now just as soon as I've finished here, said Roy. And off went the two through the paddock and into the next field in search of more wild animals. And right on cue, who should come along the path but Mr. Hitch and Mr. Hike. Who are they, Tech? Do you know them? asked Tommy. But Tech didn't know them. And the two hid out of sight of the walkers. Where are we, Hitch? asked Hike impatiently. Um, um, uh, <clears throat> Perhaps we're, we're, we're there, or, or, or there, or, uh, or somewhere here. Oh, give me that map. Hike turned the map the right way up. Where's the compass, Hitch? Give it to me. Here it is. And what does it say? asked Hike in his all-important manner. A quarter past one. I thought it was lunchtime, said Hitch. That's your watch, you fool, not the compass, said Hike, giving him a shove. But to be honest, Hike was also feeling a little lightheaded, and he sat down next to him. Tech and Tommy watched the scene in silence. The two of them ate their sandwiches. And biscuits. Look, Tommy. Then the two of them drank a bottle of pop each. And then Hitch threw the bottle on the ground. And Hike too. Goodness me! exclaimed Tech. They're throwing the rubbish everywhere. Now then, said Hike, where's the style? There should be a style around here somewhere. Oh, it doesn't matter, said Hitch. We'll go over the fence. Good idea, agreed Hike. Hike began climbing over the stone wall, 
and resting on the wire fence? Oh, they're not supposed to climb over the wire. They're supposed to use the stile. What shall we do? But just as Hike was about to drop down into the field, he fell and began to whine. Ow! Oh, Ow! Oh, Ow! Oh, my leg! Oh, Try and get oh, up and rest against the oh, wall, said Hitch. I've hurt my leg, shouted Hike. Oh, 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 oh. But Hitch didn't know what to do. Oh, 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 oh. We'd better go and tell Roy, whispered Tech. Yes, agreed Tommy. And the two of them drove out of the field and back to find Roy. Roy! 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 shouted Tech and Tommy over each other. Somebody in the field has thrown rubbish on the ground, has climbed over the fence, and has hurt himself. Go and tell Molly to phone for an ambulance, and I'll go down and see what's happened, said Roy. The sun disappeared behind a big black cloud. It was just about to start raining on Hitch and Hike, the two silly walkers. The two of them were very pleased to see Roy arriving on Mike the motorbike. Come here! I've hurt myself! I've hurt my leg climbing over the wall! Oh! And the three moved slowly over towards the trailer. Then, after helping Mike onto the trailer and telling him to hold on tight, Roy drove carefully back towards the cowshed. Hey, wait for me! shouted Hitch. And when they reached the cowshed, the ambulance was coming up the lane. So long, shouted Roy to the ambulance men, and thanks for your help. The problem with people like Hitch and Hike is they cause so much trouble, sighed Tech. Don't they just, agreed Roy. Family Farm was very, very quiet. All the animals and all the machines were still fast asleep. Roy was up and about. On his way to fetch some milk, he went to check up on Keris the cow. She was expecting a little calf any time.
terrace was in the cowshed. Hello, my darling, said Roy. How are you feeling? I'm quite well, thank you, she replied. But was the little calf about to be born today? Well, thought Roy, we'll just have to wait and see. By this time, Tech was wide awake and raring to go to work. Good morning, everyone, he said brightly. All the other machines slept soundly. Toot toot! Nothing doing. They weren't about to wake up in a hurry. Never mind, I'm off anyway, said the little red tractor as he drove through the door and up the hill. Then, just as he was about to toot his horn, Roy came to fetch him. Come on, Tech, said Roy. I'm off to next door to fetch some milk. Well, parked Tech happily. He loved visiting next door. Very soon, they reached next door. Here we are! exclaimed Tech. Then he thought, I wonder if little Bob started to milk his cows yet? And then little Bob turned up. Hello, Bob! Roy waved his hand. Hello, Bob! said Tech. Bob greeted them. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Bob, said Roy. Would you like to come to milk the cows? asked Bob. Yes, please, said Tech. He had never seen anyone milk a cow. When Tech went into the parlour, he got the shock of his life. It was a dark, cold place, and the little tractor shivered. He felt very small all of a sudden. The cows towered above him. Hello, Tech, called one of the cows. Hello, ladies, said Tech. Roy and Tech watched little Bob milking the cows. First he made sure that their udders were clean. Then he put the clusters on. The machine sucked the milk from the cow into a big glass jar. And the cow tucked into a jolly good meal while this was going on. Tech, look at the milk, said Roy. Lots of creamy milk was whooshing into the big glass jar. Tech watched the milk flowing from the jar along a pipe into another big glass jar in the dairy. 
and then on into a huge milk tank. The tank was so big it could store milk for two whole days until the milk lorry came. Back in the milking parlour, another cow had just been milked and Bob was letting her out of the cubicle. But where was she going next? Tech thought he'd go out and have a look while Bob and Roy carried on with the rest of the milking. I see, parped the little tractor. So this is where the cows go when they've been milked. I wonder how many cows there are, thought Tech. I can see nothing but legs. One, two, three, four. He tried to count the cows, but they kept on moving around. I know, said Tech. I'll go to count the calves. They're more my size. Luckily, the shed door was open, so Tech just drove in. Inside were four little calves. He loved the calves. They were very cute. Then little Bob and Roy came into the shed, carrying a bucket full of feed. They tipped the feed into an enormous bucket and the little calves attacked it with gusto. They loved their feed. These calves are going to grow and grow, said Tech. They'll soon be a lot bigger than I am. Come on said little Bob. Now it's time to drive the cows back into the field. And they all followed little Bob into the yard. The little red tractor watched as the cows ambled their way back into the field. It was time to wash the parlour down. The parlour must be spotlessly clean, and the first job was cleaning the glass jars. Then Bob and Roy washed the floors. Suddenly, they heard a noise out in the yard, and the three of them went to investigate. What on earth is that? exclaimed Tech. It was the milk lorry. The driver attached the pipe to little Bob's big milk tank. When he pressed the button, the lorry sucked all the milk into its big round tank. When he'd finished, the driver put the pipe back on the lorry and drove away. He was taking little Bob's cow's milk to the factory. Tech, 
He thought they'd forgotten to fill the jug. Roy looked a little concerned too when he saw the milk lorry drive out of the yard. But little Bob smiled as he showed them the jug. He had remembered to keep some fresh milk back for them. Thank goodness for that, said Roy. For a moment, he thought they'd have no milk to take home. Thanks, Bob, said Roy. We'll have milk for breakfast after all. Tech parped his horn happily. Thanks, Bob, he said. Toot toot. Roy and the little red tractor took the jug of milk home. Thanks, Bob, called Roy. You're welcome, said Bob. Do you think Keris will have had her calf by now? asked Tech. Well, let's see if she has, said Roy. And she had. Keris's little calf had been born in the short time that they had been next door. Good girl, Keris, exclaimed Roy. Of course, there was plenty of milk for the little calf to drink. His mummy would feed him his breakfast. Breakfast? Roy suddenly remembered the jug of milk, which he took into the house for Molly and Katie. Of course, it was just as well that Tech didn't drink milk. They'd need more than that little jug full. Someone was celebrating their birthday at Family Farm today. But whose birthday was it, I wonder? Gertie the goat told Tech about the birthday, but she wouldn't say whose birthday it was. Do I know him? asked Tech. Him? Perhaps it's a her. Gertie liked teasing people. But there you go. If she wasn't prepared to tell him whose birthday it was, then he was going to find out for himself. And off he went, singing happily as he wandered away. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear. Who, I wonder? Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Hmm. Well, asked Tommy the trailer. Well, what? Well, who's celebrating their birthday today? Well, I don't know. And he explained to Tommy the trailer that Gertie the goat had said that it was somebody's birthday today, but that she wouldn't say whose birthday. Well, it's not my birthday, 
said the big tractor. And my birthday has already gone, said Tommy the trailer. And mine too, said Simon the seed planter. Then perhaps it's my turn to blow out the candles today, said Roly the roller. Don't be silly, Roly. Your birthday is in February the same as mine, said Harriet the harvester. No, it's not. My birthday is in the summertime. Oh, good heavens, said Fred the fork. We still don't know whose birthday it is. This is dreadful. Surely everyone remembers their own birthday, said the big tractor. Oh, be quiet, said Simon the seed planter. Oh, be quiet yourself, said the big tractor. And with this, Tech decided to sneak out of the machine shed before things got very nasty. Phew, what a relief. But what was he going to do now? He still didn't know whose birthday it was. Oh well, he would just have to go and ask someone else. Someone who knew everything about everyone and who was sure of her facts. Someone like Carolyn the Cow, of course. Carolyn the Cow knew everything about everyone and off went Tech to find the cows. Where are you going with those eggs? But Katie didn't say a word. She simply tapped her nose three times with her finger and disappeared to find her mother. Why was everyone so reluctant to answer his questions? Then he remembered Carolyn. He was sure that Carolyn would answer all of his questions. In the kitchen, Katie was wearing an apron and helping her mother to make a birthday cake. Katie had weighed the butter and icing sugar and had whisked the two together. Molly broke the three eggs. One. Two. Three. Into the mixture. Then she added some flour before beating it all together again. Katie reached for the two round cake tins and Molly divided the mixture equally between them and popped them into the oven. Then they looked at each other and smiled with satisfaction. In the meantime, Tech was chatting to Carolyn the cow. But in the end, he didn't get the chance to ask whose birthday it was, because Carolyn did nothing except complain. Uh, I am so tired. I simply can't sleep. And everywhere is so uncomfortable. Oh dear me. Well, she wasn't much help, thought Tech. And he decided that the best thing to do would be to go and look for Roy. Mmm, said Molly. In the kitchen, Molly heard the postman's van arriving, and Katie raced out to collect the cards. Katie ran straight back into the kitchen before the postman had a chance to ask whose birthday it was. He waved goodbye jumped back inside the van and drove back down the lane. Tech's tires were nearly flat after driving round and round the farm looking for Roy. He'd been in every shed, 
but he couldn't find Roy anywhere. Tech blew his horn for a long time. Beep, went the horn monotonously. And finally, who should he see coming out of the van but Roy? No wonder Tech couldn't find him. He'd been at the market all morning. Roy, Roy, how old are you? Same age as my big toe. And a little older than my teeth. How strange people were, thought Tech. They could never give a straight answer. Is it your birthday today, then? Birthday? No, it's not. But it is someone's birthday today. Gertie the goat told me so. Perhaps you ought to ask Carolyn the cow. I don't think she's feeling very well. Come on then, let's go and take a look at her. But just as Tech was about to set off, he saw Gertie the goat passing, and he tooted his horn before chasing after her. Perhaps she would give him a straight answer this time. Inside the house, the food was nearly ready. Gertie! Beep beep! I think I know whose birthday it is today. He was hoping that Gertie would tell him, but once again she refused. And that's when he remembered Henry the horse. He had a better memory than anyone else on the farm, or so he liked to make out. And off he went to find Henry. Good gracious me, why are you beeping your horn so loudly? Well, Gertie the goat told me this morning that someone at Family Farm is celebrating their birthday today. Oh, I see. Yes, but she wouldn't tell me whose birthday it is. But I thought that you might remember, since you have such a good memory. No, I'm afraid I can't remember. Sorry. Bye for now. Dear me, what's the matter with everyone? As he started making his way back to the yard, he heard Roy calling to him. Beep, beep. What's the matter, Roy? And when Tech looked, there inside was the prettiest little calf you'd ever seen. Yes, Carl and the cow had given birth to a little calf. No wonder she was feeling so uncomfortable this morning. Katie ran hurriedly down the garden as a car made its way up the lane. Over in the cowshed, Roy looked at his watch. It was time for tea, and so he and Tech walked towards the house.
As Tech reached the garden gate, everyone started to clap their hands and shout, Hooray! Hooray! And to sing, Happy birthday to Tech! Happy birthday to Katie! While who'd have thought that both Tech and Katie shared their birthday on the same day? And while Katie began to laugh, Tech looked on in amazement. And after Roy had lit the candles carefully and safely, Katie and Tech both took a deep breath and blew them all out. Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! And who do you think was watching through the gate? Well, of course, it was Gertie the goat. Gertie was very good at keeping secrets. Tech was sure that he would never forget his birthday again. And none of the other machines would forget their birthdays either, because Katie had marked them on the calendar with a red pen. Summer had come to Family Farm. It was fine and sunny and the perfect day for a picnic at the seaside. Tech had never been on a picnic. That's why he was so excited and eager to set off. Unfortunately, there are always lots of things to get ready before you set off anywhere, isn't there? First of all, Tech had to fill his tummy with red diesel, so he drove towards the diesel tank where Roy was waiting for him. In the house, Katie was jumping from one foot to the other as she looked into the basket. But her mother hadn't finished preparing the picnic. Now then, some apples? Cakes? Sandwiches and crisps. What else do we need, thought Molly. Drinks, remembered Katie and ran to the fridge. Drinks, of course. And Molly put the bottles of pop into the picnic basket. One for Katie and one for Molly. And that was enough food for a day at the seaside. By the diesel tank, Roy had just put the pipe back in its place and went to close Tech's bonnet. But just then, Tech remembered his bucket. Oh, I know where it is, said Tech, driving towards the shed. said Tech, standing in front of his bucket and Katie's bucket and spade. Thanks, Roy! Hey, Roy! we better go and look for Katie and Molly or they'll have gone without us, said Tech. On the doorstep, Molly was worried. How was she going to carry all this stuff down to the beach? I'll help you! said Tech eagerly. 
and Roy put the basket and the blanket on his back. There you are, said Roy. Bye bye. And Roy watched the three of them as they set off for the beach. They started to walk across the farmyard and up the track. And up another track. There's the sea! shouted Katie, and all three of them smiled. This was heaven, thought Molly, being able to relax on the beach. Katie was having a great time riding on tech and saying hello to everyone and everything. Molly lay back down on her blanket and closed her eyes. Katie ran to the water, but tech wasn't very keen and backed away. Katie and Tech were busy building a sandcastle. Tech went to fetch water, and what did he see but an enormous crab? Here's the water for you, Katie. Thanks, Tech. And Katie poured the water around the castle. They were both very busy building away. After decorating the castle, Katie ran to her mother. Mom, come and see the castle! Well, indeed, this is the best castle I've ever seen, said Molly. And after all the hard work, the two were ready for their picnic. Molly took the food out of the basket. It all looked very tasty. Sandwiches, crisps, orange drink and cakes. But as they started to eat, Help. Katie heard a noise. Help. Then Tech heard a noise. Help. Then Molly heard a noise. Help. 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 Tech sounded his horn. Someone ran to get a rope. Tech, hurry up! shouted Molly 
A rope was tied onto Tech, and Molly ran into the water. Molly swam and swam. But as she reached the boat, it capsized, and the man fell into the water. Help! Help! shouted the man. Goodness me! Hurry up, Molly! shouted Tech worriedly. And then, at last, pull, Tech, pull! shouted Molly. And Tech pulled like an elephant. He pulled and pulled until the rope was tight. But as Tech pulled, he was getting closer and closer to the picnic. Tech pulled once more and got even closer to the food. Pull, Tech! shouted Molly. His wheels squashed the sandwiches flat. But at last, Molly and the man reached the shore, and thank goodness for that. And as he drove forward, Tex squashed the picnic again. Oh, thank you, Tech, thank you, said Katie and Molly. Toot toot, Tech sounded his horn. Come on, we'll go back to our picnic, said Molly. The man came towards Tech. Thank you, he said. Thank you very much for saving me. You're a very brave tractor. But what had happened to the picnic? It looked as if someone had squashed all the food. And there were tire tracks on the sandwiches. And everyone looked at Tech. Goodness gracious! I must have driven into the picnic when I was pulling the man from the water," said Tech. But no one blamed Tech, of course, as he had helped to save the man. "Come and have a picnic with me," said the man. And sure enough, there was plenty of food for everyone. Yes, they were going to have a picnic on the beach after all. And what fun they had, chatting and eating on the beach. Soon it was time to pack everything and head for home. Molly carried the picnic basket, and Tech carried Katie, even though the picnic basket would have been lighter. But he didn't mind carrying Katie, his friend, one little bit. But when he got to the machine shed, Tech was tired out. But he didn't mind. He'd had a wonderful day at the seaside.
It was springtime in Family Farm. The flowers were opening, the trees were in bud, and the birds were singing. But Tech looked very miserable. What's the matter with you? Have your tires gone down? Asked Quack Jack. No, said Tech. Why are you so miserable then? Asked Hannah. I've got nothing to do, said Tech. Come with me to look for some worms, suggested Quack Jack. No, thank you, said Tech. That very second, Molly, Kate's mum, came rushing out of the house. Tech, hurry, she called. We're going to Greenfield Farm now. Greenfield Farm, brilliant! Tech gave a big smile. But why was Molly going to Greenfield Farm in such a hurry? Come on, James hurt her arm and she needs help at the cafe, said Molly. In no time at all, Molly and Tech were on their way to Greenfield Farm. Tech had never been to Greenfield Farm before, but he had heard Katie talking about the donkeys, the goats, and rabbits, and pheasants. And what was the name of the strange bird again? Here we are! We've arrived! Beep beep! Tech sounded his horn. When they got to the farmyard, Molly went straight to work. She picked up a bowl full of eggs that had been left on the ledge. But oh no! The bowl slipped from her hands and all the eggs smashed to bits on the ground. Oh dear, what a waste! exclaimed Molly. Don't worry, I'll go and find some more eggs! said Tech. Oh, thanks, Tech, said Molly. But don't be long, will you? I won't, said the little red tractor, and he hurried across the farmyard. But he hadn't gone very far when he suddenly stopped. He had no idea where he was going. Whose eggs was he supposed to be collecting? Duck's eggs? Hen's eggs? Cockatoo's eggs? Parrot's eggs? Oh well, he'd just have to decide for himself. Molly was getting on very well in the cafe. What can I get you? She asked the man by the window. Two fried eggs, please, said the man pleasantly. Oh dear, thought Molly, where is Tech with those eggs? The eggs, the eggs, oh dear, said Tech as he drove on. When he saw some donkeys in the field, he sped over to them and said, Hello. I'm Tech, the little red tractor. Yes, said Desmond the donkey. Well, um, uh, have you got any eggs? <laughs> eggs? laughed Pearl. Of course not. We're not able to lay eggs, she said. Oh, no, said Tech. That's right, we can't, agreed Desmond. Birds lay eggs, said Pearl. And rep, 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 reptiles, said Desmond, knowingly. Where are they? asked Tech. Snakes, crocodiles, oh, and frogs, they lay eggs too, said Desmond. Desmond the donkey was quite a know-all. All right, 
said Tech, and he drove off. Ducks, donkeys, pigs and goats galloping gaskets. When was he going to find some hens and eggs? There you are, cheese on toast and a cup of tea, said Molly to one customer. But the other was still waiting and looking at his watch. I'm so sorry for the delay. Where were those eggs? Then, as he passed the sheds, he saw the hens pecking and scratching. He had found them. Excuse me, said Tech. Wriggling worms, what do you want? Asked the rooster. The cafe needs eggs in a hurry. Have you laid any this morning? Of course we have. They all clucked. Just tell me where they are and I'll collect them. But the hens weren't taking much notice of Tech. They were too busy scratching for food. Oh, please, please, tell me where the eggs are. Hey, Sonny, there's no point in you wasting your breath on them, snorted the pig. They won't tell you anything, a bunch of snotty hens that lot had their beaks in the air since they arrived here, if you understand my meaning. Do you know where the eggs are? asked Tech. Not me. <laughs> Galloping caskets! sighed Tech before driving away impatiently. But what was he to do? They were still waiting in the cafe for the eggs. Any moment now, he's on his way honestly, said Molly. But the man didn't look at all happy. Sulking, spitting feathers, ha 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 Jeered Kathy Cockatoo. Spitting feathers? Asked Tech. Certainly not. The hens may not have been very helpful, but he hadn't eaten any of them and ended up with feathers in his mouth. Ha ha, yes, spitting feathers. It means you're cross, you're sulking, because you haven't found any eggs. But I've looked everywhere. Ha ha, ha ha. I know, I know, I know where they are. Where, where? Asked Tech. Not telling, not telling, ha <laughs> ha. Laughed Kathy Cockatoo. Oh, please. Yes, go on, tell him, said Fanny Pheasant. Yes, all right, yes, all right, I'll tell, I'll tell. They're in the pond, in the pond, there, said Kathy. In the pond? asked Tech. What a strange place to lay eggs. He had never heard of a hen laying eggs in a pond before. There are one, two, three, one, two, three, a bucketful, a whole bucketful, chortled Cathy. But how will I get them out? Ask the carpenter. He'll help you, said Cathy. Okay, said Tech happily and set off straight away. He hadn't a moment to lose.
As luck would have it, the workshop door was open and the carpenter came out as Tech arrived. Can you help me get the eggs out of the pond? Asked Tech. I certainly can, answered the carpenter. I'm really in a bit of a hurry, you see, said Tech breathlessly. The carpenter searched around for the eggs. Are there any there? Asked Tech. Yes, answered the carpenter. Here. The carpenter rolled up his sleeves, got down on his knees and reached into the pond. What's he doing? I can't see, said Tech. Then the carpenter straightened up, holding a tub with a tightly shut lid. Oh, thank you so much, said Tech and off he went. Remember to drive carefully now, said the carpenter. shouted Tech. Bye, said the carpenter. And at last, Tech drove to the cafe with the eggs safely in the tub on his seat. But as Tech was about to arrive, the customer was leaving. Wait, said Molly, here come the eggs. They've arrived, straight from the nest, completely fresh. And the man paused. Eggs? Those are frogs' eggs, squeaked the man before bustling off to his car. Oh, Tech, exclaimed Molly. I wanted hen's eggs, not frogs' eggs. That catty cockatoo, roared Tech. But Cathy Cockatoo could be heard laughing from afar. Wicked old bird. <laughs>